Welcome back to the GSMC Golf Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Garris McDaniel, and we're back with our second segment of the night talking about the rest of the leaderboard and superlatives for the Genesis Scottish Open. So along with, you know, of course, we just got finished talking about Robert McIntyre winning. Uh, Adam Scott, who came into the day, who came into Sunday third, finished second. This guy kind of comes out of nowhere, 67, 65, 64, 67, having a fantastic weekend of golf. His driver was working. He has one of the most beautiful swings, kind of similar to Ludwig Obur, who just had some beautiful swings, but putting has been an issue in his career, but was able to overcome that. Jumping from 71 to 49 in the FedEx Cup standings is huge right now in golf if he is able to maintain that top 50 standing he is in the bmw championship and uh you know he is a step closer to that tour championship so very impressive robert mcintyre also puts himself into uh the tour championship uh, level he is now 16th in the fedex cup with two wins on this season the only other guy besides scotty scheffler to win twice or sorry only guy besides Scotty and Rory to win twice this season. So very, very impressive for Robert Mac- Bobby McIntyre, as people call him as well. Uh, Romain Lin- Lingesk, who I believe is a European Tour player or a DP World is a DP World Tour player. It was a combined field event with the DP World Tour, and he finished third. So very impressive, coming kind of out of nowhere. Aaron Rye, who has been. I mean, Aaron Rye has played some fantastic golf as of late. Uh, when when you look at his recent results, it hasn't result. You know, it hasn't come to be a. It hasn't come for a win. Uh, I. Th- did, definitely did not say that correctly but it hasn't resulted in a win that's what i was trying to say it hasn't resulted in a win but t4 at the genesis t7 at the john deere t2 at the rocket mortgage t19 at the u.s open t14 at the canadian open uh he got a t4 at the byron nelson at t7 at the houston open i mean this guy has gotten in so many top 10s this season it's and, and he's gotten in 10 top 25s this season uh very very impressive he's played in 20 events and made 16 cuts this guy has been very very consistent uh he this is his third year on tour now joined in 2022 and he has been playing some fantastic golf as of late especially on sunday 63 on a sunday he's been in contention in a lot of sundays recently so you know the nerves kind of go away after a while and he's playing some fantastic golf Warren McIlroy uh, tied for fourth with there were six guys t4 at 14 under it was Aaron Rye Rory McIlroy Sang J.M. Seath Gala Colin Morikawa and Ludwig Oberg all finished at 14 under Ludwig Oberg came into the uh, Sunday with a commanding lead he was 17 under uh, nobody really near him in um, nobody really near him I think the closest was Adam Scott or is the closest was Robert McIntyre, who was two strokes back of him going into Sunday, and he just kind of lets it slip. He goes three over on the day, uh, having a horrible back nine, uh, and he is and he comes in a t for four, and he doesn't get a win again. This guy is just eluding wins this season. Uh, he's playing playing some fantastic golf, sixth in the FedEx Cup standings. Uh, he's top five in the official world golf rankings but he just can't buy a win uh Wyndham Clark also played some fantastic golf this week in t10 uh Corey Connors Tom Kim t15 after a couple of disappointing weekends Xander Shoffley after a disappointing Thursday was able to put together three solid days to finish t15 um and other notable names like uh cam davis t26 harris english t34 adam hadwin t34 tommy fleetwood t34 after a pretty difficult pretty rough sunday where he finished one over uh nicolai hoygaard finished uh eight under at t39 davis thompson who's been in contention as of late t46 victor hoblin another disappointing weekend t46 this guy cannot put together four good days of golf man so disappointing but hey uh, it's it's a different season than the last one. Justin Thomas, T62, after he go... I mean, he was the 18-hole leader. He finished T62. That's that's tough. Finished with a 62 on... He finished with a T62 on Thursday when he finished the entire weekend, T62. Uh, but finished with a 62 on Thursday. Then goes 72, 71, 71. Goes four over... 
after going eight under on the first day, like he puts himself into content, like he puts himself at the top of the leaderboard and then just plays three bad rounds of golf and he is not the winner. Unfortunate. Um, Max Homa, T70, and then a lot of guys, a lot of guys, a lot, a lot of guys missing the cut. Uh, since it is a joint field event, there was many, many missed cuts. About, um, I think like 70 people missed the cut, so... A lot more than normal tournaments. But yeah, that is who, you know, that's that's the leaderboard. Now switching gears over to the superlatives for the weekend. Best driver, we're going to get right into this. Best driver is Rory McIlroy. Whenever he's in a field, it seems like he's always getting the best driver. This guy is the best driver on tour. Uh, second in strokes gained off the tee. First in distance. 13th in accuracy. First in total driving. He is first in total driving for the entire season and continues it here very, very impressive, uh, you know, just off the tee season for Rory McIlroy. Best irons, Nikolai Hoygaard, third in strokes gains on approach, first in greens and regulation at an 83.33% of greens and regulations hit. Very, very impressive. And then first in proximity to hole as well. Best wedges, and this one shocked me, but it's going to go to Rory McIlroy. He was first in strokes gained around the green, and he did not need to, you know, he didn't need to scramble all too much, but when he did, he got up and down, and it looked very impressive for the entire weekend for Rory McIlroy. So he is first in strokes gained around the green. Missing out on those pot bunkers really, really, really help you, and he did. He didn't hit into a bunker in the weekend, so uh, that leads into the statistic, but uh, very impress- impressive with his wedges around the green. Best putter is going to go to Matt Fitzpatrick. Not too many, um, not too many, you know, names at the top of that uh, of of the strokes gained putting, and it wasn't very consistent with the total putts made uh, throughout the weekend. So I just give it to Matt Fitzpatrick because he's just a good putter, and it just looked very consistent and very good throughout the weekend for him. Although he didn't finish too high up there. I know Wyndham Clark was also up there for strokes gained putting. I think he was third in strokes gained putting. He finished T10. So if you want to give it to him, I wouldn't mind. And you're in, in, in you know, the head cannon of my superlatives. Um, but Matt Fitzpatrick finishing T39 while putting well is, uh, is, is impressive in my opinion. Anyways, most surprising, I give it to Adam Scott. You look at Adam Scott... And it's not that impressive what he's doing this season. Uh, this second is his only, or is his, one of two top tens he has in this entire year. And the other one came in February at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. That's that's impressive. He hasn't played too great of golf, but he is he, he's making cuts at least. He's only missed two cuts all all year. It was at the PGA Championship and at the Arnold Palmer. But other than that, he is playing some fantastic. Uh, he's playing some mediocre golf, I will say, uh, throughout the year. But was able to capitalize this weekend, almost winning uh, here for the first time in I think a couple years. Uh, of course, he turned pro in two in the year two thousand, so has been around for a little while. Uh, shot that he has still not gone to um live golf he feels like a prime candidate to be over there but uh you know he loves playing on the pga tour and that's fair uh this season uh, you look at his stats and it's kind of pretty impressive 31st in strokes gain off the tee which he's always great off the tee 26th in strokes gain total third or 40th in strokes gain putting which is very impressive for him but around the green and approach to the green is where he's kind of struggled 78th and 92nd in those statistics or those categories respectively however was able to put it together this weekend so he is the most surprising the most disappointing goes to a few guys and you know i need to get rid of this category well this is my last episode so um (laughs) can't get rid of it anymore but it's always the same three guys it like reminds me of uh of i I don't know like the uh minerva mcgonagall from harry potter why is it when something happens it's always you three it's always these three will salatoris jordan spieth ricky fowler these three have been so disappointing this year i feel like they're here every time i do a most disappointing will salatoris miscut at two over jordan spieth miscut at one under ricky fowler miscut at four over these three just I'm gonna lump them into the same group because they're so talented and such good golfers, but they never can get it done on the course. I swear. Um, 
what, what, whatever, whatever that be, but it has been very disappointing. So that'll wrap it up for my superlatives for the Genesis Scottish Open. Now we're going to switch gears all the way over to the Open Championship, the fourth and final major of the season. When I come back, that will be our third segment talking biggest storylines heading into the final major of the year. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk?